Hello again to everyone connected. The vision of Activates has become a European reference demonstrating that thanks to novel technologies such as IoT, we can create new cost-effective solutions to improve our elderly's life, as well as contributing to the sustainability of healthcare systems and the competitiveness of the European industry. To go deeper in that direction, I want to introduce Mr. Giuseppe Fico, Assistant Professor of Biomedical Engineering and Head of Health Area at Life Supporting Technologies at Poly Polytechnic University of Madrid, who will welcome the key opinion leader joining this session. So, Yusef, please. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to have to you here. You. Thank and you the so floor much. is yours. Thank you, Thank so you much, Yusef. Thank you. Well, it's a great honor to be here uh, and to introduce the next two, two sessions. Before talking about the results that we have uh, generated during the project, uh, I have the honor and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, uh, Professor uh, Leocado, Leocadio Rodriguez Magnas. Hi. Thank you so much, Leo. It's an honor to be here uh, with you for two reasons. One is because uh, after several attempts, we finally have you as keynote speaker. And second is because of what you are going to say about uh, aging and uh, technology. So, Leo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe. And a great pleasure for me to uh, stay here uh, attending this uh, final meeting of the ActiveH uh, EU-funded project. Um, I, would, I would like to show you some ideas, some thoughts about uh, the meaning of using technologies in uh, paying attention to the problems of all the people. I would like also to uh, release this lecture in memory of uh, Professor Francisco del Pozo. Probably some of you uh, remember him because he did this same uh, lecture at the very beginning, in the early stages of the, of the process. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away two years ago, uh, but I would like to dedicate this lecture uh, to him and to his memory. In this first image, it's interesting to note how after the demographic transition and the epidemiological transition, now we are facing a true challenge, that is the clinical transition. We need to put in the daily practice all the things that have uh, happened during these decades, during the last century, uh, putting a different uh, profile of uh, patients, mainly all the patients. Which is the main difference between classically attended patients and this new type of patients. The main difference is that disease, when you are old, are manifested not by classical symptoms, but by decreasing in functioning. As you can see in this slide, the lower line represents how comorbidity is increasing along the time when you are getting older. And as you can see, this comorbidity does not increase significantly. But look at the other three lines, it's quite clear that as you are becoming more and more old, your function, both physical and cognitive function, is going down, down, and down. Classical health systems have put the focus in diseases, on diseases. What now we need is to put the focus in the true problem, that is the functioning of the other people. And this means that we need to transform our health systems in order to provide facilities able to maintain the physical and cognitive function of the other people. But at the same time, as they have chronic conditions, because this is a chronic condition, we need to have integrated, coordinated, and continued care. And for doing so, we need technology. Now, what is the uh, issue, what is the, the, the main facts that technology can, can provide to us? Technology has the possibility to offer many advantages for the provision of this continued, integrated, and coordinated care. But first of all, it's very important to, uh, to learn for uh, the previous experiences that had not been particularly successful. There are uh, two main issues that we should uh, bear in mind when we try to develop a system uh, using the help of the technology. First is, for instance, the uh, usual uh, problems with teleassistance. If you uh, know how the systems are now uh, working, few of them have incorporated in a significant way this teleassistance. And this is because it's full of, of, of problems or 
that it's quite usual to, is not focused in the right direction because it has been produced not taking into account the true needs of the, of, of the patients, of the, of the final users, or they have done using technologies that are not friendly for the one who is going to be used them, or have ignored the role of other agents participating in providing this care for all the people. These are a summary of the whole possibilities of technology. As you can see there, huge amount of things that technology can do for us. But this does not mean that we need to use all of them. Perhaps one, uh, the first thing we need to do is what we want to do and what kind of technology is needed for providing this need of care. Not general care, but the need, uh, the true needs of care. And I'm going to put the emphasis in three main components. Of the, um, of the building of these uh, uh, systems of care, taking into account what can we measure at home, how can we analyze what we are measuring, and very important, the final output, how we can integrate this information in the way of providing care. In the case of what we are going to take from the patient, from the home, we have huge amount of sensors. We are able to measure gait velocity, grip strength, uh, uh, time that the people is outside or inside, uh, time that people spend walking, things they do. And we can incorporate all of this data in our systems that have the possibility to analyze. Using artificial intelligence, but also using many other uh, uh, issues that technology can provide to us. And we can use this artificial intelligence, but we also can include in among this, uh, these uh, factors we are going to analyze, for instance, biomarkers from urine, from uh, blood, from many uh, tissues, and from many uh, biological samples. And we now have technology enough to provide several inputs that at the same time can be analyzed in different ways for a PCA or some other uh, very uh, well-developed statistical ways of approaching the data with the final aim of providing some outputs. Output, uh, outputs that can be uh, or should address the true problems that all the people can experience in their daily lives. Not only for treating diseases or functional impairment, but, and this is very important, to prevent them, to detect people at risk and to provide them using algorithms for uh, decision-making uh, uh, helps to uh, provide them the best, uh, the best uh, uh, um, way of caring for them. I am finishing my brief speech and we have in several departments, including mine, uh, we have put in, in, in March some of these of this, uh, technologies and we have adapted how our uh, geriatric uh, service or in, in Hospital Universitario de Getafe is functioning. Due to these technologies, we have incorporated several of them. First, for instance, this is an example of how the whole service is now approaching the issue using technology, but in, this is not only as a general uh, way of uh, providing the service, but for instance, in this case, is for one very precise unit, that is false unit, where we uh, provide uh, attention to all the patients who have experienced one fall, more than one fall, or indeed some fracture. Using technology, we are able to assess the risk, the prognosis, the uh, things that can be changed uh, when, uh, with our treatments and how this is going to impact the prognosis of these older people. So I am finishing. Uh, I would like to, to give some take home messages. That is, technology is very helpful, but if it is used appropriately. Second, technology is a main instrument to develop new models of health of care. 
and this uh, can uh, be used in both ways. First, to develop these new health of care systems, but also to attend particular conditions like the example I have shown you of the, uh, of the false unit. So thank again for having invited me and uh, hopefully, I'm pretty sure about that, that you are going to continue enjoying for this uh, final meeting of the ActiveH process. <laughs>